All right, so a little fun one, a little fun one I heard on the Bill Simmons um, podcast, so shout out to Bill Simmons, and I put a little bit of a twist on it, but they were talking about, and I found that really interesting, so I thought I'd, I'd do it with you, price of admission players. So, so basically, you've got your last $100 for an NBA seat. So for your month, for your paycheck for that month, you've got $100 left, you're going to go to an NBA game. So what I decided to do was for each decade since the 80s, we have we basically have a group of guys that would, we would pay to see with our, our last $100. Um, the caveat was that it, it didn't have to be body of work, so it didn't have to be over over their career. It's just for that era. And it could have just been one run from that era. So an example would be Jeremy Lin, right? Or um, or Gilbert Arenas was one that came up. The Jeremy Lin Sanity run, that could be one. Uh, it didn't have to be body of work. So we're going to go through. This will be a little bit of a, a spiel for both of us, but I think it will be really interesting. So I'm going to start first. We'll go with the 1980s. So my price of admission All-NBA team from the 1980s would be at Irvin Magic Johnson, obviously, um, one of the one of the best passers and, and Showtime guys. I had um, George Gervin, um, you know, finger rolls, just the way he scored, very, very smooth. Would love to watch him play. Larry Bird, um, you know, a guy that just fundamentally sound with his jumper, you know, self-explanatory. Dominique Wilkins at the four, self-explanatory, unbelievable dunks. You'd see something crazy athletically every night. And then Kareem at, at, at the center spot uh, for the 80s era just because the sky hook, he had a unique tool that you didn't see with a lot of other teams. So you, you would go to an NBA game every week and not see a sky hook and then, and then you see 15 of them watching Kareem. So um, that was my five. I had my, my, my tough omissions were Isaiah Thomas with the Pistons and Bernard King with the New York Knicks. What do you got for me in the 80s? With this, folks, the way I thought about it was like in these decades, I want, I think I would probably, especially if someone didn't play all 10 years in that decade, I would rather somebody who finished the decade rather than somebody who didn't finish the decade and was sort of on the downside of their career. And I like players who transcend their position that are fun to watch. So Magic and Jordan in the backcourt, obviously Magic doing what he does and, you know, being 6'10 point guard and, and Jordan just sort of, in any era, that guy, you, you want to pay to see that guy play, especially how exciting the guy was. You put Jordan in the 80s. So, so one caveat I also said was you can't use the same player in two eras. You can only use him in one era. So you put him in your 80s. Oh, r- really? Oh, yeah, fuck. Okay. All right, hold on. <laughs> so I will I will submit that I'm – all right, fuck it. I'm going to put jo- uh, Magic, Dr. J at the two, Bird at the three, Dominique at the four, and Hakeem Olajuwon at the five. Okay. Hold on. Fuck. So you can't do two. Shit. I, see, I, I never, le- I never read the, I don't read fucking, I don't read cal- uh, caloric intake labels on the side of food, and I don't <laughs> read fine print when it comes to emails. <laughs> Just the fine print. Yeah. I, at the five, I'm gonna have to go with, uh, with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar then. So I'll go with Magic. I'll go with Dr. J, Bird, Neek. And, uh, and um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at the five. Any, any omissions that any notable? Oh, and yeah, that- yeah. So the notable omission would be now. The, now, does the omissions count as my one pick? Or yes, yes. We're gonna oh, put they some do count. So Kevin Mc- Kevin McHale. Yep. And Moses Malone. Yeah, good ones. Good ones. The 80s was a tough one because there was, like you said, there was a lot of people, a lot of players from the 70s, like Magic, Kareem, that were, that was kind of their peak and they were still in their peak in the 80s. But, you know, it's, it's a tough, uh, a tough peak. But there was, there was about, I had about 10 players that I could have went with. But, um, we'll move on to the 90s. So my 90s team was interesting. I, I chose Jordan for my 90s era. Um, so he's my, my starting two guard just because I think, I think as far as an individual talent in the 80s, he was probably better. Like, I think, as far as electrifying, getting dropping big numbers, but I think once he figured out winning championships, he was a bit more balanced with it all. Um, but that's why I went I went nineties just because he won all those championships. My starting point guard, funnily enough, was Tim Hardaway. Nineties era, the killer crossover. I think he really was, you know, the pioneer for the killer crossover. I mean, it was just amazing. His ball handling skills for that era was kind of unseen. Um, followed his career in Golden State and and Miami, and really enjoyed watching him play. Power forwards. I had two power forwards for forward spots. I had Charles Barkley for obvious reasons. Undersized power forward, just a brute in there. Really athletic and and carried that you know a Phoenix Suns team um, to a finals was really fun to watch Sean Kemp to me at the power forward spot was just phenomenal um, athletically I'd pay I'd pay to see him any day of the week and he was one guy that would would almost guarantee to posterize someone every night and then my my five was Hakeem so um, I had a Hakeem in the 80s he was very fun to watch similar to Jordan really 
massive numbers, highlight dunks, but um, what he did in that MV- predominantly that MVP year uh, where he would just he just bamboozled you know David Robinson and and I think Shaq was a rookie that year. Um, what, what he did out of those guys was unbelievable. You know his footwork, his attention to detail, fade away both shoulders, just really fun to watch. My omissions, I had a fair few. Um, I had Reggie Miller. Um, I love watching him play just because he was he was a prick. He talked shit to the fans. I shot the, the piss out of the ball. Chris Webber. So he was obviously Golden State, Washington, and then a few years in SAC uh, before their big run. He was fun to watch for me. And then I had two Euros. I had Drazen Petrovic just because he was you know an idol of mine and and was really a pioneer for one of the first Euros. Uh, Marshall Onus and a few other guys that that actually got minutes in the NBA. And um, Sabonis. I had Sabonis in there. Um, Arvidas just because of the way he passed the ball as a big man. I, I think you know throwing throwing shit behind his shoulder, behind his neck, behind the back. I'd pay I'd pay to watch a guy like that just bamboozle someone with some crazy passes. That was my nineties. What do you have? Yeah, so and I love John Stockton, man. I mean, as point guard, I mean, the way he could run a team, the how tough he was, how he fought, how he ran the pick and roll. I, I just thought he was a special player, one of the best point guards of all time. MJ, of course, at two, uh, just the footwork, the winning, the the killer mentality, just. You know, obviously, no one really has to explain that. At the three, I go with Clyde Drexler. Clyde was a special player, like, athletically, just gifted what he can do. He could really score. He was, you know, one of the one of the best players in the 90s compared to Jordan early in his career. Probably the wrong one to compare to, but he was such a good player. Made it to two finals, couldn't really get her over the hump, but I'm a huge Clyde Drexler fan. And then Charles Barkley at the four over Carl Malone, I know. But, you know, Barkley was so entertaining. I mean, he's just tough. He brought it every night. Um, he was, you know, he could go inside, go outside. Uh, you know, one of the more entertaining players to watch. And then Akeem Olajuwon changed the position, you know, played both, dominated on both ends of the floor. You know, big time defensive player, big time offensive player, footwork, won two championships. I mean, just a guy that could carry a whole team with. And then the notable exceptions, geez, there's like a thousand of them, but Karl Malone was probably one of the bigger ones. David Robinson was a guy that I thought about. Scottie Pippen, Shaq, but, you know, Shaq was so entertaining to watch, but I think in the 2000s, he was a little bit more dominating than the, you know, than, than in this, than this 10 years. So those are some of the notable guys that I kept off, but yeah, that was my five from the 90s. Man, I miss John Stockton. Yeah, that was one that um, definitely should have been in my admission. So a lunch pal guy that would relate to a lot of people for price admission, I think. All right, so 2000s. This was a hard one for me. The 2000s were a hard one. Um, I was played in this era, um, but also watched it as a young a young fella in college and high school. My 2000s, so starting point guard, I had Steve Nash, obvious reasons. I mean, he, he transitioned the game. Um, a lot of what we see today – uh, was was because of Steve Nash, I think, just the pace, um, the D'Antoni system. That's what everyone's trying to play like now. My two, I had Vince Carter, obvious reasons, highlight, human highlight reel, like just what he did athletically for about a five or six year span there in Toronto. He kind of slowed down a little bit athletically in New Jersey, still had it every now and then, but in Toronto, it was like, man, every night you were like, I'm seeing, I'm getting my money tonight seeing this guy play. Kobe at the three, obvious reasons, one of the greatest of all time, just just his ability to, to turn games on their head by himself. Kevin Garnett, now had a caveat in this, Minnesota Kevin Garnett. Um, there was the year, I think it was 02, where he just put up phenomenal numbers, carried that team to, to a, I think, a Western Conference final was one of those years. Um, he was very good in Boston. The numbers dropped a bit, but but they had a team that was, you know, tough and rugged. They were pretty balanced with Zerbiak and all those guys, and I really enjoyed watching KG play specifically with that Minnesota team. Um, and then my center was Shaq with the Lakers. That was a caveat with the Lakers, not the Heat. With the Lakers during that three-peat run, I think just his size, strength, athleticism, and as you said, the reason why he wasn't in your 90s team, I enjoyed him with Orlando as well, but just his sheer dominance with the Lakers, man, for those three years was just, you know, the luxury to have Shaq um, on that post to get you a bump bucket and then have Kobe on the perimeter with shooters was unbelievable. And my admissions were tough on this one. Tim Duncan, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't look at him as a highlight guy, but for me, price of admission was just just giving you a 40 ball without even really knowing that he's done anything highlight worthy at times <laughs> was why I, I would pay to see him just because he was just frustrating for me to play against, but also frustrating if you were cheering against his team because he just he was just a bucket and fundamentally sound would, would really make mistakes. Gilbert Arenas, the Hibachi year, 
Oh six, oh seven. Um, when I was with Milwaukee, he hit a buzzer beater against us. Um, I was right under the basket for that one. I saw it go straight through, boxing out. So he had, uh, he definitely made my list for that year. Jason Williams probably could have been late nineties, but I put him in the two thousands as an omission just because you know he was a fancy guy that you'd pay to watch. You'd pay to come watch the behind the back passes, you know, crossovers, great ball handler. So I enjoyed watching him. And then obviously Alan Iverson was my last one that I had a, as an omission. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of. Um, Philly or anything like that, but you couldn't understate with a guy his size and strength what he did with the 40, 50 balls at times. Um, at times, probably overdid it with with, with dribbling and whatnot, but um, definitely a guy that if you went to watch an individual, that would be one. What do you got? Yeah, um, I had Steve Nash at the one, Kobe at the two. Uh, Nash, he's just like two-time MVP, like a magician with the ball, like knowing where and when to give it to players. I mean, was one of the best shooters of all time, you know, before Steph got in the league and got going, just because he did such a big time, you know, shooting numbers, mostly off the dribble, mostly with defenders draped all over him, and just what he can do. I, I just, I thought he was one of the most entertaining players I've ever seen. Kobe, for obvious reasons, the guy was just a, you know, he brought it every night and just one of the most talented scorers you'd ever, you know, you'd ever want to come across. I had, you know, some changes that I made to this. Uh, Tracy McGrady at the three. Uh, I thought T-Mac was one of the most explosive scorers that I've ever seen. One of the most skilled players that I've ever seen, you know, be able to just, you know, just athletic and handle the ball, could score all over the floor. I thought he was, you know, really, really just a great player to watch. I'm going to go with Dirk Nowitzki at the four. Dirk just, I, I'm just a big fan of shooters, man. Seven foot can shoot could carry a team, you know, not many players that could carry, carry a team. And I thought that he was one of the best players I've ever seen as far as a skilled side on the offensive side of the ball. And especially early 2000s where he's, he was more limber and more athletic than he was at the end. But I thought he was really good. And, you know, I, I just kept on going back and forth, Duncan, Garnett, what have you. But I just thought, uh, I thought Dirk at the four is, you know, I watched him play once, you know, watch him against Boston. He was ridiculous early in his career and you know he's a good one and then the f- at the five i was gonna go with garnett but i'm gonna go with Shaq. just Shaq's just too good uh dominating force and he's a guy that you definitely want to pay to see he's you know a guy that doesn't come around he's a once in a generation player and you know what he could do on both ends of the floor and then obviously notable garnett duncan Allen iverson LeBron, but LeBron only played six seasons in the 2000s, and I know he won an MVP and all, but, you know, obviously I think it, I wanted to use him in the next. So those are some of the notable guys that I left off. So that was it. Yeah, good ones. Good one. I, did, I had the same debate with um, with LeBron. Um, there's a few guys like that. So Dirk's the same for me. I, I went in, in this era, which I'll go through now. So my 2010s, Steph Curry starting, obviously, at the point guard position. LeBron's my two. KD. Oklahoma City KD specifically, even though Golden State the championships or not, but but he was a big problem in OKC and was very enjoyable. I had Blake Griffin at my four um, as far as price of admission, just because the athletic. You know, I like having Dunkers at my four, as you've noticed, Wilkins and Sean Kemp and whatnot. He was just a guy. You know that that Lob City run didn't win much or didn't bring much in the in the realm of trophies, but um, as far as getting your money's worth by seeing him absolutely shit on someone on a dunk, <laughs> that, that's worth the price yeah, of admission sure. itself. And then my five, I had Anthony Davis. I had as my five. Now, I could probably, you know, probably change that for Dirk at the five, looking at it now. Um, I had some omissions. I had the Dirk finals run specifically. I mean, Dirk had a fantastic career, but that finals run, um, what he did, taking a, that Dallas team to even get to the finals and then win a championship against the, the the big three in Miami, that was off his own back. And and just the run that he had, they, they just had no answer for him in the finals. And it was just so enjoyable to watch the big three that was touted as as, as everything and anything. A kid, you know, a kid from seven-footer from Germany that was just, they're putting him on the elbow. He's driving by Haslam. He's shooting fadeaways. And I watched a few of those clips actually while I was researching this. And I urge anyone uh, to, that loves basketball to go and watch that finals run. Someone's put basically all of Dirk's big buckets from that final series on a, on a you know, 10, 15-minute clip on YouTube and, and some amazing shots that he did. Late shot clock, you know, the standard Dirk pump fake, pump fake, a little shoulder into you 
few fadeaway shots that just should never have, have, have even hit the rim were, were just all net and that was an amazing run. And the other two omissions I had, Chris Paul, uh, obviously one of the, the greatest point guards to play and, and everything that he's done, even though he hasn't won a, a championship, he had to be mentioned. And then I had Clay Thompson as well, just because of in the 2010 era, the Splash Brothers and just his ability to, to nonchalantly drop 60 on you with 10 threes, I think is, is someone I would pay to watch. What do you got? Yeah, so – Thank God you told me about this rule that we can't use multiple guys because, like, I <laughs> literally mirrored it. I, yeah, I literally mirrored it from, you know, today's game to before. But, man, it's tough. So, I'm going to go because I, I originally went Steph and Harden at the 1-2. I'm going to probably change that to Dwayne Wade and Westbrook, you know, because of the fact you can't reuse. So, I, I, I want to use those two guys. I mean – you know, D Wade with his run in Miami, you know, starting in like 11 and on, you know, I, I know he wasn't really relevant later in the 2010s, but, you know, early on, he was really good. He was the best player, in, you know, on a championship team and you just electrifying. So I'm going to put him Westbrook another thing guy just came at you and never stops attacking, you know, triple double machine and uh, just, just sort of took the league by storm. So those two guys for sure. Um, you know, with that, and then Kawhi Leonard, uh, Kawhi at the three, uh, obviously, you know, championship, just simple, you know, big run with the Spurs and, and then obviously what he did with, uh, with Toronto. So I'm going to put him at the three. Yeah. Uh, fuck it. I'll just go small. I'll go LeBron at the four and then Chris, Chris Bosch at the five. Chris Bosch. And, you know, I probably could have picked somebody better. No, you know what? Homage to Tim Duncan. We'll put Duncan at the five, and Bosch could be a notable uh, absence from the team. So let's go with D. D Wade, Westbrook, uh, Kawhi, LeBron, and uh, Duncan. That's my five. Not bad. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even have Bosch at all. So it goes to goes to show you how hard this is. Yeah, to do, man. neither do I now. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A- I forgot this. This rule's good. I, I like this rule. I, Shit, I should have paid attention more. But so I put Bosch as a notable, uh, notable off. Yep. You know because I got what's his name? I got um, you know I got another guy at the five. I'm having I'm having a senior moment. So let me see. So we go Westbrook, uh, D Wade, Westbrook, LeBron, Kawhi, uh, Kawhi, LeBron, and at the five, Duncan. Yeah. So my notable guys that are off would probably be Bosch. You know, another guy is Paul George and Griffin. Probably the three guys that I left off. Yep. Yeah, Paul George is a good one as well, but yeah, I just didn't have him in that mix. I I switched my now a little bit from from the names you just mentioned. So for my my today is I got Westbrook as my starting point guard, triple double every night, um, and we'll get into that a little bit in a second. Um, Luka Doncic is my two. I had Zion at my three. Now I had Kawhi initially, but I thought you know what, Kawhi's there's just too many games missed for me, so. I'd risk buying that ticket and he wouldn't play. <laughs> so I had to swap him out. I put Zion and Giannis as my as my three, four. And then I had Jokic as my five just because, and, and it's kind of the opposite of what I do with my four men. He's not that athletic dunking guy, but he's just one of those guys that looks like, you know, like I've said many a times, a guy you drink with at the pub and just drops a 40 ball on you at a high clip shooting, you know, rainbow threes on you and one footed disrespectful looking shots and, and pass the ball like like any you know the all time great big men passes so um, I really enjoy watching him and then my notable exemptions Joel Embiid was my other five that I was tossing up with Jokic as of today um, I had Dame Lillard Kawhi Leonard was was a exemption um, and um, James Harden Oof. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, today's today's a tough one to do. Um, it just depends what direction you want to go, and um, just one of those things. What do you got for now? We'll go with uh, Steph at the one, Doncic at the two, James Harden at the three, KD at the four, and Jokic at the five. Dame Lillard, probably a, a notable exception. Uh, Jason Tatum, notable exception. I'm probably overrating that. Bradley Bale is a notable exception. Yeah, Bill for so that's sure. That's where I'm going to go with the one of five. Yeah, Bale's having a hell of a year. Yeah, KD. Now, I see KD's injuries and whatnot um, kind of put, made me put him in the tens and, and just the OKC run. I mean, I think KD in any, any era, and that's what makes this so hard. You can put a lot of these guys in a change them, but I, I just thought his, you know, his peak in, in, yeah. in OKC was, was phenomenal. Probably should have switched out Kawhi and, and Durant. You know, for the, you know, for the 2010 and now, but yeah, for sure. That's why I'm I'm fucking terrible at picking these teams. The, like all NBA teams, 
Because all of these guys are going to fucking average two and two the rest of the season and their careers <laughs> because I put them on my fucking team because I'm Eddie Mush. But yeah, but it's, look, it's a fun thing to do. That's why I brought it up. I think it's just looking back to NBA history. Obviously, you need to know the game a little bit to an extent other than just Googling names um, and what you enjoy watching. That's why I had some random ones like Tim Hardaway and Jason Williams. I didn't just go, you know, the obvious ones at times. But yeah, it was an interesting thing that Bill Simmons did, so I enjoyed it. And for everyone listening, give us your thoughts. I mean, there's a lot of... People that'll get fired up about these lists and uh, for whatever reason and, and try to do them yourself. They're hard to do. They're really hard to do. Like five players from an era, uh, from a decade era is, is, is really, really hard to pick. And, and it all depends on what, what appeals to you as a fan. You know, there'll be, there might be some of these people that played high school basketball that love the fundamentals guy that set a good screen. So then I might be in their, uh, I might be in their all time team from a decade. <laughs> it's hard, man. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't easy, especially if you can't use guys multiple errors. You got to figure out how many years they played in that, you know, and especially like the players that only played the bot, like the bottom half of like, f- like the bottom four years of one, you know, one ten, one, one decade. And they only played maybe four or five years in the, in the first on the next decade where other players, sometimes you're going to leave some players out just because of that. And then some top players, if we get lucky, and they could play the whole decade and dominate in their obvious choices. So, yeah, it's a tough one, man. Well, everyone out there, let us know your thoughts on socials. Let us know which ones we completely messed up and, and which ones we didn't. I've got